job. I'd committed to that, at, you know, teaching at the high school. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to leave that. And then lucky, luckily enough, there was an, you know, evening shift at Cablevision. So, yeah. um, it, it worked out. It was, it was, you know, a, a tough stretch, but, um, but, uh, it, it, it was good. Uh, well, I've worked that shift. Yes. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> now, the main reason we have you here, money during all of this, uh, First off, what were you taught about money growing up? I mean, my parents gave me the basics. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at the time, they showed me how to balance a checkbook and you know how to how to manage a banking account. But we never really, you know, talked about you know debt or credit cards and um, you know things like that. Uh, it was more just kind of the basics of how you you you, know, you can manage your money day to day with the tools that were available at the time. Um, so, the, you know, there was some, some basic, some basic knowledge transfer, uh, but that was, you know, that was really it. And it's not something that's maybe even back then that wasn't really readily available. We had no websites. So uh, you had to go to library. It's not taught in school, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I, I'd never had, uh, and I don't, I don't know at the time if I would have even been, you're interested in taking a class about money, yeah. you know, in high school or college. But um, you know, certainly looking back on it, I, I wish I would have learned yeah. a little bit more about it earlier. But um, yeah, I think you know, you kind of thrown into it as you as you get older, as you you know, mid twenties. Now you're st- you know, if you fo- land a full time job, you're starting to make you know more money, and then it's kind of you know, learn as you go. And you were working two jobs. Yes. Yeah, so. not not having not having a lot of free time to spend that money because mm. I was working so much. But you didn't even know to invest it. No, <laughs> no, no idea how to invest or uh, you know how to budget or or really um, have some of those you know those basic uh, financial knowledge you know principles. I know you mentioned you you kind of had the mindset of you only live once. Yes. Case. Yeah, it was, you know, I was working hard, so why not, you know, uh, reward myself or, uh, you know, treat myself, whether it was, you know, eating out or, you know, I remember buying a, uh, early on, uh, you know, a PlayStation system for my birthday. I was, well, I, you know, I work hard, so, you know, bought the system and a couple controllers and a couple games, you know, I probably spent four or $500 at the time. Yeah. Um, and it was like, well, you know, I work hard, I deserve this. Yeah. Now, I'm guessing uh, during this time, you got married, started building a family. Yeah, so late late 20s, got married, started a family, you know, and then that's kind of when, from a financial perspective, things kind of ramped up, right? Uh, we bought a house, so now we had a mortgage, and um, then with kids, um, expenses with, you know, young children, we, we you know, I'm, I'm a dad of three. Uh, our son and daughter were, you know, twins were born born first. So that was like sticker shock. I remember going to uh, the store, you know, the first time, one of the first times, you know, after they came home from the hospital and going to buy, you know, diapers and wipes and formula. And I, I remember, you know, spending, you know, a hundred and something dollars and was like, wow. Yeah. You know, and then we, you know, rinse and repeat pretty much every week of buying, you know, buying that stuff. So the expenses really kind of ramped up, you know, quickly, uh, you know, with a family. What would you say some of your biggest mistakes with your money? I think just not having a plan, Mm. right. Or not seeking out any information about, um, personal finance. Uh, you know, so basically through, throughout my thirties and with my wife and growing family, we just kind of, we never had a plan for money and, and my salary had increased. I was still at cable vision at the time and I uh, was making good money. Um, but we were spending a lot of money. Uh, and it was still that mindset of, well, I work hard and so I deserve it. Mm. Um, you know, vacations and, um, you know, we started to use credit cards mm. and just manage, you know, minimum payments and but just never really seeking out the knowledge. It was kind of naive about um, how to really manage your money, and that was really, um, you know, looking back, it's unfortunate. I wish I would have, you know, found some information, read a book, uh, just something to point me in a, in a better direction than just kind of, um, you know, using that mentality of, uh, you know, I des- like I said, I deserve it. I work hard, so mm-hmm. I'm just going to spend. And was that the my was that mindset set spreading 
through the family too? Well, the kids were fairly young, but, mm. um, you know, we, we would obviously say, you know, as we wanted to be good parents, we would say yes to a lot of things, whether yeah. it was, you know, buying gifts or, you know, taking them places. You know, we always went on a family vacation at least once a year and usually put that on a credit card and, you know, never saved cash for it, always throw it on a credit card and then worried about paying how we would pay it after the vacation. And so the vacation was great, but then you came home and you were stressed out about, um, the increased, uh, you know, credit card bills and how we're going to pay, you know, pay it off. So it wasn't, uh, uh, it w- overall, it wasn't too fun to go, you know, go on vacation because you had that, you had that stress when you came home. Well, in June, 2010, that's when you realized you were in some big financial trouble. Uh, how far did that reach? So, yeah, that was kind of our rock bottom, you know, aha moment with our money because we were looking at planning in early June. We were looking to plan our, you know, typical, you know, family vacation for the summer. And um, at the time we had five credit cards and no cash savings, uh, you know, to speak of is a couple hundred dollars probably in the, in the uh, savings account. And I was looking at, you know, how how would we pay for our summer vacation? And we were close to the limit on all of the the five credit cards and so i went oh i said okay well uh, well i'll go get a credit increase so that we can afford this vacation so i I reached Mm -hmm. out to each of the five creditors and they said no you're you have you have too much debt uh and so that was really the you know the moment where i said wow you know we make you know good a good salary but we're spending you know way too much money and we can't even go on a vacation um, so that was really the, uh, you know, the rock bottom moment to say, all right, we got to figure out a better plan or do something different with our, with our money. And at the time, and I had no idea because I, I didn't have it down on paper or an Excel spreadsheet was we had over a hundred thousand dollars worth of, you know, just consumer debt on these five, on these five credit cards. So it was just consumer debt. Yeah, it was just, you know, the car breaks that's, you know, you use the credit card or yeah. the, you know, dishwasher blows up or, you know, we want to go out to eat, but we didn't have the money. So you put it on the credit card and you worry about paying it off, you know, later. It was mm-hmm. a it was a managing minimum payment game, basically. As long as we could afford the minim, minimum payment each month, we would continue to, to use the credit cards. Not realizing you're paying more in the end anyway with the interest. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, long term, it was, it was a terrible plan because yeah, you're paying more with interest. And, um, you know, overall, you were you know, uh, accumulating this, this big pile, pile of debt. So what do you do? Is there a first step you take? Yeah, I think, I think the biggest, the, the, the biggest step, um, that anybody can take. And what we did was just get our numbers down on paper, hmm. right? Just understand how much money we had coming in, how much our, you know, reoccurring bills were per, per month, you know, mortgage, electric, you, you know, utilities, um, credit card bills, just what were, you know, how much do we have coming in and how much do we have going out? Um, you can jot it down on a piece of paper. I like to use an Excel spreadsheet because, you know, I can create formulas and sum up money. Um, but yeah, so that was, the, and, and what we found was that we were spending more money per month than we made. Um, that was the you know, once you have it down on paper, it's, it's, you know, there, there it is in black and white. And so we realized we had to cut, um, find ways to cut spending, Mm. uh, to be able to kind of get that, you know, income to income to outgo, you know, balanced. Now, was this challenging to get your entire family on board? Um, it was, so I kind of started to to dig around and, and find out some information, um, you know, I, I, I came across Dave Ramsey at the time. So I read, I started reading his book, The Total Money Makeover. Okay. I found uh, at the time, you know, I found a number of uh, personal finance blogs and started reading as much information as I could. So I kind of came up with the plan of, you know, getting our numbers down on paper and then, you know, realizing that we had to make a cut. And then I had to bring that, you know, discuss it with my wife and, you, you know, the, the fear initially was, well, how can we do this without credit cards? You know, we wanted to get rid of the credit cards or stop using them altogether. Um, and so it, that, the credit cards were always kind of our safety net. Mm. You know, if something went wrong, we would rely on them. 
So it was it was a little bit, you know, the first couple months were a little bit scary because it wasn't something that we were used to. Um, so it took a little, you know, conversation with my wife and just understanding the, the long term goal that getting out of debt would would be better for us. Um, you know, the kids were fairly young at the time, 10, 9, 10. So they were they really didn't have much choice. <laughs> You know, we we explained to them what was going on. We involved them, and, and we and we okay. we basically said, you know, mom and dad are we're probably going to have to say no a little bit more often to things, uh, whether it's you know eating out or buying gifts or whatever it may be. But and but here's the reason why that we were doing it. So we really involved them early on, so that they you know just didn't get the impression that mom and dad were being you know mean. Mm. Um, so the, the, you know there was a reason why behind the, the changes that we were making. That's important. Everybody's got to be aware and on board. Um, are there, is this the same for just about any family or any person getting an idea that they should follow these first steps? I think so. I think that's the, you know, the first step is always just, un, like I said, understanding your, your numbers mm-hmm. and then really communicating it, right? And agreeing, you know, with my wife, there was some, you know, we, we had to... S- sit down and and go over the numbers and then come up with a plan as a as a team because i didn't you know i couldn't just do things you know if i if i started doing one thing and then she was doing another yeah. we would you know we wouldn't be working towards the same goal so certainly you know communication and then uh involving the kids too because I, we just wanted them to be aware um and it was a good learning experience for them to, to see that you know mom and dad could make mistakes and um, that this is what we were doing to, to, you know, clean it up and to, to, um, you know, get beyond the mistake. So it was, it was a good early learning experience about money for them. Did you set a target date that you wanted to be out of debt? Um, no, hmm. no, no real target date, but just, um, you know, one of the initial things we did was, well, what expenses could we cut? Hmm. Um, that was one of the, you know, the biggest things we did initially in the first couple of months. So just looking at how we were spending our money, eating out, um, and, and so, you know, there was a low hanging fruit that we could cut eating mm-hmm. out. Um, but it, that meant we had to change the way we, you know, shopped, grocery shopped and having meals, you know, cause at the time the kids were running around to different activities and sporting events. Mm-hmm. And so, that was the trap. We would, oh, well, you know, we have to go to practice at six o'clock. So we'll just grab something, you know, some fast food to eat tonight. Mm-hmm. But a family of five, you know, that could run, you know, 30, 40, you know, dollars. And if we did that a few times a week or a few times a month, you know, that could be two, three hundred dollars in eating out that, you know, if we took that money and, and grocery shopped uh, with it, we could, you know, we could eat a lot, <laughs> uh, a lot more, you know, a lot, uh, cook a lot of meals for $300. So that was one of the biggest changes we did. And then we looked at things like, um, entertainment, um, you know, expenses, you know, video games or television, can add uh, up. things, things like that. That can add up. So did you, uh, do the, uh, snowball effect to start paying off debt? Yeah, so that's the so we basically looked at our you know five credit cards mm-hmm. and we started um, you know paying them back um, you know minimum payments on the four of them and as much extra money that we could pit, put on the the fifth one or the smallest debt and so um, the idea of the debt snowball is once you pay off one debt you move that payment that you're making on that debt to the next one. And so it, it gains momentum like a snowball, you know, rolling downhill. Yeah. And then once you pay off the second, you move all of that money to the third and then so on down the line. So yeah, that was a, um, it, it worked for us because it helped us build momentum. And, um, you know, you started to see the wins, you started to see the, yeah. the, uh, credit card balances go down. And then you went from, you know, five debts to four and then from four to three and so on. So that really worked well for us. Now, you uh, launched a website and blog called Debt Discipline. Um, first off, why that name? Um, I, I, because I think, you know, obviously we're in debt. And then what we found was that it, it takes discipline, right? It takes discipline and change in behavior to get out of debt. Um, you know, we had to change the way we were spending our money to be able to be successful with it. So that's, that's how that, the name came about. 
And were you uh, doing the blog?